venue because the protesters there weren't protesters. They were there to destroy. They lit cop cars on fire. In they were Charlotte's, burning trash cans. David, in Charlottesville. It was, it was out of in, control. But in Charlottesville, which is where we started, obviously, you know, you were invited to, to speak about that. Right. In right. Charlottesville, what evidence do you have for violence by the peaceful counter protesters against the white supremacists? <sighs> Peaceful counter protesters that bought, brought uh, bats, swords. In one case, I saw a flamethrower used by a gentleman against uh, the KKK uh, protesters or the people that attended that rally. It was not peaceful. What did they do? Just find those weapons there laying around? They brought them to. We have in studio with me Congressman Jerry Nadler of New York and Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman of New Jersey. And you both are planning to introduce the censure resolution, uh, Congresswoman Coleman. What is the purpose, and do you think you could actually get the votes? Well, let's pray that we could get the votes. I think this is a pivotal moment. I think that uh, the president has just been so far outside of what a good leader, a decent, insane, humane leader should be, that Republicans are now verbalizing more publicly what they've been saying to us privately. And hopefully th this will uh, provide the momentum for them to express in a formal way uh, this is simply an expression of Congress taking a position with regard to something that the president has said. Can I, can I ask you mm -hmm. about that? Um, you use that word formal. Uh, speak to us about why that matters. Speak to us if viewers are saying, well, maybe this was wrong, but these Republicans who have spoken out have already done so. What is achieved by doing it through the actual formal process in Congress? Well, it first of all, it puts it on the record. It becomes a part of our official record, um, of our displeasure, our concern. Mm -hmm. I think that this is the latest in a manifestation of several things that this president has done that give us tremendous pause. But we've not been able to awaken that sort of pushback from our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. But what has happened this weekend and his response to it has been so heinous. Uh, to just give uh, validity mm -hmm. and, and support to neo-Nazis and neo-Confederates and white... For the rally, Ari, the far left in this country right now is not about protesting. It's about if we see something we don't like, we destroy it. If someone's about to give a speech and we don't agree with the content, we create a violent atmosphere that presents, prevents the speech from taking place. That's what it's boiling down to, and Trump knows that. And he also knows that no matter what he says, Ari, and you know this too, it'll be condemned, it'll be, the, the left will say it's not good enough, he didn't say right. the right well, David, thing. We're here, uh, to, we're here to talk about him. the facts, not conjecture about how Donald Trump's words will be reviewed, but let's, let's look at the facts, because this is obviously important. If you look at the civilian victims in Charlottesville, right, which is our topic, you have the fatality, I spoke to that. You had 35 hospitalized injuries, 19 from that driver associated with Unite the Right, three counter-protesters, and by our count, 13 who do remain unidentified. If you look at some of the counter-protester victims, these are people who were documented as attacked by those people at Unite the Right. Heather Heyer, of course, DeAndre Harris, Natalie Romero, Marcus Martins, Bill Salvin, Bill Burke, Renee Hall. These are people who were injured and hurt. And I want to read to you uh, from what one of the National Front white supremacist groups said about their side, again, with regard to who were victims. They said afterward premises that this might be the moment when even our Republican colleagues are willing to go on uh, the record, so to speak. Do you think it could actually help national unity? I certainly do. I think that um, this has been a very divisive uh, administration, not only in the things that it's said, and let us not forget the things that it's done, um, and that this is simply a manifestation of the kind of racism and other uh, phobias and isms that they've demonstrated through policies that they've been pushing forth in this administration um, that, have, that are economically and socially oppressive. And so, I think that we've reached a point now where it's just uh, no excuse can be given to this president for what he did and did not do over this weekend. Congressman Nadler, take a listen to Tim Scott, a uh, Republican senator, on all of this. I'm not going to defend the indefensible. I'm not here to do that. What we want to see from our president is clarity and moral authority, and that moral authority is compromised when two... From the National Front, we had zero vehicles damaged. All our people accounted for and moved a large amount of men and materials in and out of the area. 
For those claiming that there was violence on both Tuesday happens, there's no question about that. If Republicans say that, does that mean, in your view, they should be for this censure? Yes, they should be. Besides, can you name any victims of what you're alleging? Well, we have 13, as you indicated, that were unaccounted for. So I'm imagining that some of those were on the right side of the protest. But look, I'm not justifying right. but just what to be that clear on the evidence did by then, racing up with the car. So you, I'm not justifying but you, it. But he you was wrong. Name. He's a killer. I just, right. I just, it's so important when the president makes these claims and other people repeat them. Right. At this moment, you can't name a single person. I haven't Is that seen correct? the police reports. I haven't seen the police reports. Neither of you. So I mean, not, uh, neither well, no, one I've, of us I've can just talk put in on detail. The, sir, I've just put on. No, sir. I've just put on the screen the reporting we have, which is based on eyewitness accounts, on okay. police reports. We spoke to the police today about this locally. So I am, I am working off the evidence. I take your point okay. that we all need to work off the evidence. But I'm asking right. you, how can you back up the president's okay. assertion that both sides caused this violence if you don't have the name of a single victim of, of, the, of the alleged violence? I absolutely can. Ari, you're saying that because there are more injured on one side, then it must be, mean the other side was more violent. The violence was equal in nature. The fact that maybe, and I'm saying maybe because I can't confirm this. For the center, the center is necessary because, among other reasons, for many reasons, and Bonnie expressed some of them, but the president is normally seen as speaking for the United States or for the United States government. And when the president speaks in such moral calamity, when he equates uh, neo-Nazis and white supremacists and violent people with uh, people who were opposing them, when he seeks to create a moral equivalency with su white supremacists and neo-Nazis with decent people, he must be rebuked. And Congress must officially say, on behalf of the United States, Congress is the other branch of government, the judiciary can't speak, uh, that this does not represent the American view, this does not represent the American people, we represent the American people, and this is morally objectionable, and the United States is a moral country even if it has an immoral president. Well, you talk about who the president's speaking for. Uh, the White House has said his tweets, uh, infamous or famous as they may be, are official statements. Here was the one this morning that said, sad to see the history and culture of our great country being ripped apart with the removal of our beautiful statues and monuments, part of his statement. W what do you think he's saying there, bringing this back up Thursday morning? He's saying the same thing. And our beautiful monuments that he's referring to are monuments to traitors, to people who went. More were injured on one side doesn't mean that the other side is absolved of criminal responsibility. They're not. They were both equally violent. They attacked each other. It was out of control, and both are worthy of condemnation. And that's what Mr. Trump did. Right. So, I mean, again, I don't know how you can substantiate equal, which is a measurement, if you don't have any evidence to balance. Well, and I let saw, me play I for you the, the for your response. Okay. Let me play for you the police chief's a statement about the origins of this. Okay. Do you believe that one side was more responsible than another for instigating the violence? This was an alt-right rally. Okay. Your response? My response is the alt-right did have a permit. They sought a permit. They were given a permit. The court affirmed the permit when, when it was challenged. The other side did not have a permit. That's important because that means the other side's behavior was per se illegal. When they got there and they decided to counter-demonstrate, they didn't bother, and they never bother with permits, Ari, and the media never holds them accountable. It's always the other side that has the permits, but it's like, oh, well, well, they're the outright, so they'd had to have it, and we don't care. Are the, you the aware? The doesn't need a permit. Are you aware that counter protesters had two permits? I've not heard anything to that effect. No, well, I'll put I am to war against the United States, who resulted in the deaths of over 600,000 American soldiers on both sides uh, in defense of the indefensible, in defense of slavery. Uh, the, he, he said, where does it stop with Washington, with Jefferson? Washington and Jefferson were patriots. The people we're talking about uh, were traitors, and they were traitors in defense of slavery. Um, and if he doesn't recognize the moral distinction there, and the moral distinction today between neo-Nazis and uh, a white uh, supremacist and decent people and the United States, then Congress has to make that clear.
I agree 100%. I think this is an opportunity for Congress to stand up. I think that this is a modest, actually, action on the part of Congress, that Republicans should not be afraid or concerned uh, to sign on to this. They should be willing to do so to establish to their constituents that they're there to serve them. They're not here to serve Donald Trump. And so this is an opportunity for all of us to come together. And our country needs us to come together. And so Congress can be a very important um, element to this to on not. the screen this is reported out by Washington Post I will uh, fact check and confirm part of your claim you are correct okay. that there was a unite the right permit for emancipation park and there were two permits for two other communicate to citizens all across this country whether you're black or Jewish or white or mm -hmm. whether you got an infirmity or whatever your situation is you may be gay whatever it is parks for the counter protesters um, I can also tell you, if we're speaking about the legality of the permits, which is the underlying question, right, number one, I, I think you would have to agree they didn't have a permit to drive into people to kill or murder and to injure. And number two, uh, it's also important that if you want to get into the law, the Unite the Right folks ultimately uh, were determined to have violated the use of their own permit that you cite. And that's why the authorities cleared the area. How was that? Why? Because they were attacked by the other side? That's a violation? And listen, as far as you suggesting that the... The murderer who drove his car into that innocent young woman uh, needed a, I mean, that. Obviously, that's a criminal act. Obviously, if mm -hmm. that's happened the way it looked like it happened, that's murder, and no permit covers that. So, were you, and were you, you know, asking honestly, about how they violated? I'll put up on, on the screen again so folks can understand it. Because again, the, the evidence matters. I, I hope you and I can at least begin with that premise. Yeah, I've been practicing law for 30 years, so yes, I, sir. I definitely agree with Charlottesville you. Charlottesville City official statement alert: Unlawful assembly declared for that rally at Emancipation Park, and that was as of 11:35 a.m. Right, and that's my understanding. That proclamation was made because it turned violent when the counter protesters. The Antifa is you're part of this fabric of this great United States of America, and we're there to serve the interests of our constituents. And in your mind, uh, you're in Congress, you have to work with any president. Do you believe that President Trump is genuinely confused as to what happened in Charlottesville and who's responsible? Or do you think he is lying about it? I don't think he's confused. I think he sees it through these very, this very skewed lens. And I'm very suspect of him because we're engaged in so many deflections behind this behavior that he does that's so inappropriate that we're not paying attention to some of the policies. Right. We had to pay attention to the fact that, you know, he's creating this voter fraud situation. We got to pay attention to what this attorney general is doing to affirmative action and, and the safety and, and, and protection of our people. We need to pay attention to decisions that, that economically and socially impact everyday people. Well, so we've got to stay awake on a lot of different levels well, at the well, same time. You mentioned that. we. Have the far left thugs arrived, and that's why it was declared an unlawful assembly. They have their every right to do that, but as we know, the cops also failed in their duty to... to, to ...displeasure our concern. Mm -hmm. I think that this is the latest in a manifestation of several things that this president has done that give us tremendous pause. But we've not been able to awaken that sort of pushback from our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. But what has happened this weekend and his response to it has been so heinous. Uh, to just give uh, validity mm -hmm. and, and support to neo-Nazis and neo the pivotal moment. I think that uh, the president has just been so far outside of what a good leader, a decent and sane humane leader should be, that Republicans are now verbalizing more publicly what they've been saying to us privately. And hopefully th this will uh, provide the momentum for them to express in a formal way uh, this is simply an expression of Congress taking a position with regard venue because the protesters there weren't protesters. They were there to destroy. They lit cop cars on fire. In they were burning trash cans. David, in Charlottesville. It was, it was out of in, control. But and in Charlottesville, which is where we started, obviously, you know, you were invited to, to speak about that. Right. In right. Charlottesville, what evidence do you have for violence by the peaceful counter protesters against the white supremacists? <sighs> Peaceful counter protesters that bought, brought uh, bats, swords. In one case, it's dark to something that the president has said. Can I, can I ask you mm -hmm. about that? Um, you use that word formal. Uh, speak to us about why that matters. Speak to us if viewers are saying, well, maybe this was wrong, but these Republicans who have spoken out have already done so. What is achieved by doing it through the actual formal process in Congress? Well, it first of all it puts it on the record. 
it becomes a part of our official record um, of our. I saw a flamethrower used by a gentleman against uh, the KKK uh, protesters or the people that attended that rally. It was not peaceful. What did they do? Just find those weapons there laying around? They brought them to. We have in studio with me Congressman Jerry Nadler of New York and Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman of New Jersey. And you both are planning to introduce the censure resolution. Uh, Congresswoman Coleman, what is the purpose and do you think you could actually get the votes? Well, let's pray that we could get the votes. I think this is.